Hi, this is Phil Newman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined today by Martin O'Dee, who is the organiser of the Longevity Summit Dublin, which is taking place on the 18th to the 20th of September. Hey, Martin. Hi, Phil. How are you? Yeah, great. Well, uh, looking forward to what really will be one of the first events uh, of the of the season associated with our you know wonderful industry and uh, very excited to see this new event getting off the ground and of course you know dublin is a is a lovely place but ireland of course is very you know very much a uh, an successful place associated with a lot of uh, transition of commerce from from uh, from america out into the european marketplace so we'll talk about that i'm sure in a short while but let's just talk about uh, ireland itself you know you think this is going to be a good contributor to the international longevity economy yeah um, yes that's that's the, the the opinion from this point uh that it should really hit the ground running uh, from now um, and become a major hub of the international uh, longevity economy i mean you have you have countries obviously the united states um russia the uk and in fairness Phil, a lot of the work you've done in the last number of years has created London, I think, as one of the hubs of this nascent industry. Um, but I've seen countries like Switzerland recently and Saudi Arabia, of course, and Singapore all pitch their, their, their flag in the ground and say, we are going to be a hub for this, this exploding industry. Um, and I think Ireland is in a position where they have an awful lot of the infrastructure and the ecosystem required to do this and to actually, you know, gain substantial momentum very quickly. Um, yeah, like you said, Ireland has, I suppose, over the last 30 years, it's 30 years really since the European Union um, was founded, and uh, Ireland has become a, a, a place where huge volumes of American money has entered into uh, the European market um, through, uh, through Ireland uh, for a, a number of reasons. But um, what's been required, I think, in that period of time is a major shift in terms of the professionalism around particularly things like copper finance and copper law um, to, to, because these are really big sums of money. So you, you just can't have you know, mistakes or errors. Or, so that level of professionalism around managing those major transactions, um, I think, puts Ireland in, in a really good position to continue to be a hub, literally a hub. I mean, it's it's even geographically you can see its positioning between the US and and and, and Europe, um, and it's the first point of entrance with, into the European Union. Um, it's a, a fairly <clears throat> you know committed member of the European Union, um, and there's a bunch of other reasons as well, obviously, why it has economically uh, you know gained so much in those thirty years. But I think it's if this is, as you and I both kind of agree, likely to be the, the industry of the 21st century, um, I think it's incumbent on Ireland now to, to use all of those tools that it already has in its kit um, and embrace this, this industry going forward. Understood, Molly. So let's let's talk about some of the the big players that have come into to Ireland in the past. Um, thinking the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Dell, companies like that. What were the factors that made their market entry successful using Ireland as its as its uh, jumping off point? Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I touched on a couple of these, but the European Union, I think, is the central element because you're you're uh, you know, if you're a company in in, in Boston and you want to sell products in Berlin. You pay taxes if you have a base in Dublin, you don't essentially. So that's an enormous thing. And you've got the second biggest economy in the world in, in, in uh, America for much of this period of time, selling into the biggest economy in, in the world, which is the European Union. Um, so uh, you have the English language, obviously, you've got some cultural connections around why they, a lot of those companies, particularly the American ones, um, would have come in and and when you when you mentioned those tech companies i mean ireland now has nine of the top 10 uh, it companies have their base in in ireland um and it's believe it or not it's the second largest exporter of uh, computer services and it in the world which for a, a really you know small population is is really outsized performance um so uh, like people will argue exactly why the success, but the success itself is clear to see in that 30 year period. It's called the Celtic Tiger. It's economic growth of about 10% uh, year on year 
for a lot of, with the exception of the financial crisis for a number of years. Um, and I think there are things, the tax regime is definitely pro-business. Um, and even aside from, let's say, the standard corporate tax rate, there is a lot of uh, protection around intellectual property. Um, R&D is very well supported from a tax perspective. Um, so this is kind of, I think the Irish governments over a number of, of generations have put their, their eggs in this basket. That we will become a place for interna international business to happen and to, to take part in. And they targeted IT, they targeted uh, financial services, um, and they did target pharma as well. Um, but the IT story has been an enormous success for sure, yeah. So let's talk about those uh, big pharma organizations. There are quite a number of these in Ireland, including J&J, &J, Roche, Pfizer, Novartis. Do you see that uh, Ireland is already a biotech hub? Um, or if it's not, do you see that that's something that could happen relatively easily? Um, yes, I think is the answer. Um, I think you have a number of, of regional hubs around the country as well, which is important to mention, south, west and east. And you have huge support actually for anything that's cross-border with the north of Ireland um, is, is very heavily funded and supported. Uh, and they do have their regional programs, which include tech, financial services and so on. But definitely some of those major pharma companies are here. Now, could you pivot to uh, specifically the longevity economy, for example? Um, I think you have all of the tools already there. You, you have the in infrastructure, you have the supporting industries, which are really important. Like I said, corporate law, corporate finance, um, IP protection, all of these types of things are, are um, very you know, useful. You have um, high level of education, for sure, and you actually have a, a pretty high level of, of focus on STEM and, and on um, the, the, the sciences generally. So um, I would imagine all of those same, uh, the same factors that bought both the, the tech sector, the financial services, and a very substantial uh, amount of pharmaceutical companies within Ireland, where it is, I mean, in the pharma sector, it's production. Um, it's not just having an address and, and selling services around Europe. Uh, there is, again, kind of to, to, to show the outsized uh, effort of pharmaceuticals, Ireland is actually the fifth largest exporter in the world. So, uh, and again, you, you, the population of 5 million, so that's less than one in a thousand people uh, abide here. In, in, on, on the planet. So have been the fifth largest in anything, again, is very, very outsized. Um, so there is the ability to manufacture and to produce and export these, these goods for sure. Um, and I think that can, that can pivot to the biotech. I can't see any reason why not. Uh, like I say, the, the supporting industries in the infrastructure are very much in place. It's now just a question of igniting um, the passion in I guess biotech, but more specifically in uh, in the longevity economy, which of course we're very excited about. You know the uh, the longevity summit Dublin's not too far away now, so you're staging the event between the 18th and the 20th of September. So, uh, what would be your typical attendee? What type of attendees are you going to have, and why will they be going? I'm imagining it's a mix of uh, business, um, hmm. science, as as well as possibly government. Well, I should have said at some point, Phil, we're delighted to have you come as well and, and be one of our speakers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, primarily you're looking at scientists being at the top table, um, investors, people who enable the scientists to, to do the work that they're going to do. Um, I, I, I don't want this to be, you know, a, a kind of a PR type answer, but having been to these events over 11 years now, um, Sometimes you get people that are just curious uh, and, and they come along, not necessarily investors or scientists or, or you know, even specifically in the surrounding area, area of the, the, the healthcare sector. Um, and you get some wonderful interactions and conversations. Sometimes you get people changing careers on the back of these, uh, you know, conference uh, attendances, but you do get people sitting down with different perspectives. And honestly, as this moves into, you know, something that, that was 
a little bit more uh, niche, let's say, 10 years ago into something that people can generally, you know, latch on to and, and demand action. I think you do want different perspectives, different opinions. I've seen people from marketing backgrounds, for example, attend these conferences and have superb inputs into how the field itself is brought forward and how individual companies should frame themselves. Um, but literally from any, any background, I guess, where you have a curiosity, you want to see, so sorry, Phil, absolutely the scientists, the investors, the people who make the decisions, the people who support them, governmental people, definitely. Um, we want, we will have some and we want as many as possible in attendance. Um, but actually having just a, a breadth of people from different walks of life, um, it's if they want, if they're curious, if they want to see, I suppose, the biggest industry in, in the 21st century, um, be a part of it or be a witness to it or whatever, um, then, you know, I, I believe this is a really good view into that. And, and you know, um, maybe they'll have an input and they'll have a, a voice, to, a role to play into the future as well. Yeah, very good. Well, uh, Martin, obviously, the, when you look at the uh, stellar group of uh, in speakers that you've got together, uh, a very mixed group of uh, mm -hmm. leading investors, leading scientists, uh, lots of things going on. So I'm looking forward to joining you uh, at the conference as well. So thanks for your time today. It's been brilliant to talk it through. And obviously, best of luck as you prepare yourself and your team for what's going to be a very interesting conference. My pleasure, Phil, and we can't wait to have you over. <laughs>